Of course, I should be sh ashamed now after Josephine's speech, but I'm not such a bad person. And uh, I hope that you can understand this too. It's a true pleasure to continue from what Margot and Josephine said just before. Uh, I will very much talk about justice, the rule of law, because that is very important for us women, especially. In wartime and trying to solve the conflict, we very often say, and that's quite true, there is no peace without justice. And that looks so clear to all of us and should be too. But I have been talking with a lot of uh, men, uh, lead mediators in different negotiations, and uh, they tell me that it's more important to get the peace than justice, that justice can come afterwards when we have time for that. I don't agree, but I can well understand if you look on the situation, is it doable? when the warlords are sitting there around the table, negotiating, why would they then agree to skip uh, amnesty, skip impunity? Because then they know that they will spend the rest of their life in jail. So it is quite tricky, and that shows so clearly that we should definitely not have the warlords around the table. There should be sitting women who have gone through the wars, who have been victims, who have kept the households alive, the families alive during the conflicts. And they are those who should be around the negotiation tables, together with some smart people and men. We certainly will find them too. It's very important that we have in national uh, jurisdiction also applied the uh, international criminal law. Uh, the legislation should be uh, the same and legislation altogether. Uh, and that must happen much before any kind of conflict, because then it's too late. Um, so many countries still don't have the same rights for women, for land ownership, property ownership. And that means that you are always in a in a, a little bit weaker position, and very much weaker position. And are we sure about that when a girl, a woman, a boy, has been sexually abused, but especially the girls, is the police really uh, believing her, or is there a little bit of doubt that didn't you want yourself? And that goes for our Nordic countries, by the way, too. Uh, so we must have a police force with many women included in the force that really listens, investigates. We must have a court system that also is um, uh, fair and uh, with professional judges, prosecutors, councils that take women's needs into account and understands them. We have to pay a special care for witnesses. I have been called a couple of times to the International Criminal Tribunal of former Yugoslavia, and I felt like the worst criminal sitting there with all the councils and all the evil people who ask me uh, terrifying questions. How then for the one who has just come from perhaps middle of the nowhere, who has been raped, who had decided to, to give evidence about this and will be totally done by the very, very nasty councils. We have to give them all kind of protection so that they are not uh, then, um, perhaps even their families could be threatened back home. Because you know how it is in the small societies. Everybody knows about everybody. And perhaps the perpetrator's families or himself is somewhere around. So the witness protection is very, very important for, uh, for in all different cases. 
Uh, this primary uh, responsibility to investigate and collect information uh, about cases of rape during conflict, also, of course, in civilian time, uh, lies with the governments, with the states themselves. But when we are coming to the real bad, uh, terrifying crimes, like war crimes, like uh, crimes against humanity, genocide, uh, the case can be moved to the International Criminal Court. And that is, of course, good that there is a possibility for this. And these are the very grave uh, cases that are now in The Hague, uh, in some way, uh, proceeding quite slowly, but no. Uh, in, inside this system, there is also a trust fund for victims that I have been um, having the honor to represent the Western world in, in uh, the board of directors for this trust fund for victims. And we have been really able to help uh, people who have been the victims of these atrocities. Uh, it can be child soldiers, it can be bushwives who have been kidnapped at uh, 9, 10, 11 year old, who have given birth to the warlords and the gangs, like in northern Uganda or in DRC. And uh, it's fantastic to see how much you can achieve by trauma counseling when they are in groups and find that I'm not alone. There are others who have gone through exactly the same. And sooner or later, we will manage. Of course, we can also give them help to livelihood, to education, and um, and also physical support. You know, it has been very popular, especially in northern Uganda, Joseph Connie's groups, that uh, you just mutilate the woman after the rape. You take your jungle knife and cut off the nose and the ears and the lips, and there you can have a plastic surgery so that they at least can, in some way, uh, survive. Uh, it's very important when I'm talking of witnesses and victims, victims that we never should mix them up and mess this situation. For the victims, when we want to support victims, they must be quite anonymous. Those uh, NGOs who are implementing our projects, they can also be just there somewhere behind. Because if you start to... to uh, demand that the victims also stand witness on trials. The whole situation is changing and they can be in big danger. I'm always looking at positive things, that there are positive things are happening too. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I was invited to Croatia, to Zagreb. The Minister of Veteran Affairs has understood after 20 years in, uh, in the you know, the Balkan war uh, in the beginning of 90s, how many women were sexually abused. And now he's preparing a law that gives a, now afterwards a compensation, perhaps even a veteran pension to women who have been uh, found that they were sexually abused in the siege of Vukovar, in all these terrifying things. And he was very firm about no ethnic diversity. You can be, if you look at that part of, of Europe, it can be a Serb, a Croat, a, a Bosniak, but you have been a victim and you should have then your compensation. Uh, women are definitely needed in decision-making processes. And uh, we have good results from the Women's Situation Room in West Africa where you and women together with um, Farm Africa Solidarity and Angie Brooks and whoever uh, just started with at, uh, at elections with information to women that you are allowed to vote for whoever you want. You don't have to follow your father's or husband's advice. 
and also prepare them for the voting to look, take care of that there is a network with police to, that uh, ensures the safety of women when voting. And this has had absolutely wonderful results in Senegal, in Sierra Leone, Kenya even, they have got calm, and in many other places. Women must mobilize in small things, but to do something for the democracy. And then I would like to finish with my favorite example nowadays. We just had a memory of 20 years from Rwanda, and that's nothing nice. But instead of just crashing to nothing, Rwanda with 800,000 killed people, mostly men, 500,000 uh, sexually abused, raped women. Everything was crashed in the society. Um, bureaucracy, and that's something good, <laughs> that it's crashing, but there were no professionals, nothing. And the President Kagame can be accused for a lot of things, certainly, but he understood that to build up a nation needs both men and women. And now they have an economic growth of 8% yearly, and women have the majority in the parliament and are as many lawyers in the high court as men. That's a good story. Thank you. <laughs>